done for that. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it, it is even more frustrating, I think, for, for people who, who tries to have, you know, a critic view on the world around them. I think it's frustrating to see that, you know, other people, which are, as we were saying, dumb, they are actually kind of, you know, living their life. Um, they are happy. And I think somehow you look around and you think, you know, this guy, he doesn't know shit. I mean, he doesn't understand shit. But look at him. I mean, he's happy. He's not worried about anything. And look at me. <laughs> look at me instead. I mean, I'm overwhelmed about problems, about potential issues. I'm trying to, you know, secure my future, secure my family, try to come up with ways to survive what could, ha- what, what could happen in the future, right? And, I mean, at the end of the day, on a daily basis, who's happier, me or, or him, right? <laughs> it's kind of frustrating some, somehow, sometimes. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. I, suddenly, I have, uh, I have to leave, sadly enough. Oh, yeah. How can yeah. I want to thank you uh, extremely hard? For this uh, good session. Oh no problem, man. And Anytime. I hope uh, we get the. Uh, uh, yeah, great, great to have. Thanks. Take have care. a have a nice evening. See ya. Yeah, you Take care. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Yeah, Neil. I you, the other thing is that the other thing we were, we were talking about Bitcoin um, yesterday, uh-huh. and the other thing that I think is cool, you know, there's like as Bitcoin is adopted, there's sort of a culture that is sort of obviously there's no inherent culture because it's just this amorphous thing, but there is some common culture that is popping up around it. And one of the things I've noticed is that in that environment, like, you know, uh, people and their ideas stand on their own, right? It's not necessarily based on titles or um, education, supposedly supposed or you know academic education or yeah and what i mean by that is like you have you have people who are in academia who um maybe they're they're uh they're knowledgeable in a narrow a very narrow subject range and maybe they do have expertise in that but they think for some reason they think that they're that they're intelligent and that their intelligence expands beyond whatever narrow study range they have and they start saying stupid shit about like things that they don't know about, you know, and, yeah. and there's, they're the experts, right? But I mean, yeah, the, the definition, the definition of experts nowadays, it's very, I think, fluid because the world is moving so fast that if you are an expert on everything or anything today, that doesn't mean that you are going to be an expert on whatever, like next month or next year, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, if you if you look at, for for instance, if you look at Warren Buffett, right? Uh, there is absolutely no doubt that he's, he has been one of the greatest investor in the history of mankind. And when you hear something like like him, some someone like him telling that Bitcoin is a scam, Bitcoin is a Ponzi, is going to zero, it's not worth any money to put to be put in, you start wondering. I mean, how how old is he? I mean, with all due respect, but how old is he? And his generation now, it, it's kind of, you know, uh, it's kind of the end. And we maybe we should stop to think in ancient ancient terms and start to embrace what's going to come next, right? Yeah. You know, I, I think one of the things that is just refreshing is like the idea that um, people can have ideas and their ideas will be judged based on the merit of their ideas as they stand and not based on any other unrelated factors, right? Like where you were born or who you know or what credentials you have, you know? I think, yeah, I think so. I mean, an idea, is, it's a very powerful concept because, you know, first and foremost, an idea is, it is so powerful because one, uh, once you accept that idea in the brain of a multitude of people, it can grow exponentially and, and it cannot be stopped, right? And then after after a while, if you see that the, that idea, which is at, at the very beginning, is just a concept, which is you know, it's some sort of a metaphor. It doesn't exist in the real world. You cannot really touch it. It's just you know, it's fugazi. It's just an idea at the end of the day, but. This 
simple fact that the idea is accepted and people start to believe in it, it makes it makes it real. It might it might take a little bit of time, but it makes it real. If people believe something is strong strong enough, they're gonna act like that is the reality and they're gonna make it reality in the future. I, I think that's a, a little bit of a paradox, but if you look at you know the world, a lot of stuff happened just because people thought that it was possible that something like that could happen and they made it possible, right? It, I mean, even technical analysis, if you think about that, it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Essentially, yeah. I mean, it, it's, uh, to some degree, technical analysis uh, changes, it will never change because uh, human psychology is deeply rooted. Right. Human psychology yeah. could change like we, we could evolve, but it would take thousands of years. Right. So yeah. maybe it changes in thousands of years. But when you're talking evolution like that, you know, um, yeah, I mean, there is a reason if something like Wyckoff, which is at this point more than a century old, there, there must be a reason if it still works today. Right. Yeah, 100 percent. And, you know, you sort of see those time uh those distinctions play up over and over and over, yeah. right? And um, Wyckoff, you know, you, you can look at, and across any asset class, you can look at stocks, commodities, Forex, yeah. Bitcoin. That's really, that's really the beauty uh, of studying price, studying price action with no indicators, no nothing on the charts, just a clean chart. And you can really see how price is moving because go back, as I, as I did, you go back and look at some charts from the 70s, and you see that you can spot the same behaviors. And again, it is all fractal. You can look at a behavior which is happening on a weekly time frame, and then you zoom in and you see that on the five minute. It's just, it is doing exactly the same, just on a different scale of magnification, you know, and it really, it is really fast. Yeah, I saw there was a, a guy named Adam Grimes, who he, he went back and he uh, pulled out ancient records from Roman times of price uh, prices of different commodities and uh, things they were selling in Roman era, and then he plotted yeah. them on a chart and then did he back tested it. <laughs> and apparently, yeah, and apparently he uh, his, he had a good edge. Yeah. Was there a moment for you when you sort of realized that, you know, when uh, the light flipped in your mind that like. Um, price which you'd been looking for the whole time was was right in front of you and that's what you needed to focus on yeah i mean i think i well maybe not to you but i i have told this story so many times now i mean as you know you know me we have been talking for a lot of months at this point i think almost two years and we have been in, in crown and server together right and you know the moment where you know the the light kind of turned on it was when i removed every indicator from the charts and I started to look at every single candle, how it was forming, how it, how it was moving, you know, before it was even closed. And at the very beginning, it wasn't really something special. I was just looking at it and I was thinking, yeah, okay, price is moving. Uh, I was expecting this, I was expecting that. And uh, looking at it long enough, I was starting to see that there was some sort of a pattern that was keeping on repeating itself. And that was kind of the, the first uh, glance of light. Then I started to look at Penia, Penia's chart. And I was like, hmm, that is strange. I mean, I'm studying this stuff for like nine months now. And this guy is posting naked charts with just a bunch of lines, maybe two or three, but really simple stuff. And for whatever reason, you know, Price keep, keeps reacting at those levels. There must be something to it, and I want to know that. So, you know, I started chatting with him, and he kind of he kind of put me on the path of taking a closer look at price alone with, with anything more, just no RSI, no stokes, no moving averages, you know. I think that was what put, put me on what I consider to be the right direction, right? Yeah, it's funny how you mention that because um, that's basically the same exact trajectory that I I 
embarked on and was initiated down that path by the same exact individual. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was kind of funny. It was kind of funny because you know, you you buy a, a program, you buy a course, and you think that you know just because you bought it, you're gonna be able to do what what the guy who's selling it to you is able to do. And it's not that I didn't try because I tried. You know, nine months straight, I tried that, and it's not it's not like it didn't work because it, it was working. Somehow, I mean, I was seeing that things were playing out. I could have some sort of a of an edge on the market. I made a few a few bucks out of that, but it wasn't really like when you feel that you are doing something, which you you feel like, yeah, you know, it's working, but it's not like I'm really feeling comfortable with that. There is something which is missing. And it was when I when I started to strip away from the charts everything that I I I got to the point where I had that moment like uh huh that's it that that's what I what I was missing that that's what what I need and I think that's very easy for my brain to relate to and it is also very easy to take decision based just on that simple thing with without any other thing. I don't have to, to wait for a bunch of indicators to align. I don't have to wait for this and that. I just need a candle which confirms what I think I'm seeing and then I can bend the size in and wait, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it really um, helps as far as like managing risk and how to manage your position because if you're trading like indicator-based strategies, like, okay, yeah, the... Uh, the indicator flashes a signal and does a little jiggle or whatever it does. And uh, so now you have to get in. Okay, but then what do you do then? I mean, how do you manage that position? I and mean, that, first and foremost, where, where do I place my stop? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, well, that was a big thing for me. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, okay, I'm in the market now. What do I do? And it's like... I mean, oh, when, when, is my, when is my idea fucked up at this point? Should I have? To, should I wait for the moving averages to cross cross over again? What? And at that point, where where price could be? How much could I be? You know, on the at that point, I, I don't even know when I start a trade. Well, the key now, is the, the key is that if if your indicator gives you a signal and you uh, enter the market, if it's wrong, the key is just to get another, find a new indicator. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, and move on to the next two one. Of us right here, right now. And to be honest and completely transparent, I've been I've been a little bit disappointed in what uh, what the cave became over time. And you know, it's not like I mean, it's not like I don't like the guy anymore. But I got in because I thought it was some sort of an, an environment where you you could develop yourself like you know, a community where you could really grow as a trader. But after a while, it looked to me like it was just some sort of a marketing channel. You know, every month or every three months, there was a new indicator for sale. Uh, or there was a new indicator on the chart. And, it, you know, it, at a point, I just lost interest, I guess. Yeah, no, I, I definitely see what you're saying. I mean, I think... The part of the reason why you you would you, somebody might think is that it's a place like to develop and grow out your skills is based on the uh, you know the nature of the guy who was in charge of that and he was you know a professional trader and um, had a, a what we'll perceived to be a professional uh, relationship with the market and there really yeah. wasn't other people on YouTube with that level of professionalism right so you you kind of thought that that professionalism would spill into the program, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. It, yeah. It is exactly that. Because yeah. I, I was looking, back then, I was looking at a bunch of different YouTubers, and he was the, the only one who was showing his PNL, his positions, his trades, you know. So I thought, man, this is the only one I've found so far who's showing his PNL. It must be legit, you know, something like that. And again, I'm just saying that because 
as I was saying before, just because someone have, has a strategy and is working for him, it doesn't mean that it's going to work out for you. And that's exactly what happened to me with, with the program with Trump. I, I can't imagine he's profitable. I'm not doubting that. It's just that his concept, they, they don't apply to me. I'm not comfortable with them. You know, it's just that. Yeah. I mean, you can, you could tell somebody like what your, uh, if you have a well-defined edge. And what I mean by that is like, if you, you know, as you trade, like there's really no cap on development. Like the, yeah, no. the, you know, it, it, I've only been, you know, trading for X amount of years, but you know, as I approach the 15 year mark, you know, it, it's, it's going to look very different than it does for me right now. And, uh, I think so. yeah, yeah. Our, the, our perception and our knowledge of the market going to grow because, you know, if you stay in the market long enough, you know, you, you will, I mean, first and foremost, you will be forced to adapt because the market's not going to be the same forever. you got cycles, uh, you got, you know, the nature of the market, it's not constant. You, you were talking about volatility, you know, volatility is not constant. The market cycles are, are not constant. So business, business cycles, they are not constant. So again, monitor the monetary system is not constant, so the market will, will adapt. And if you want to be in it, you need to, to follow along, right? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, it's just you know, it, it, I think it's part of the discovery process for people when they're they're trying to learn. You know, it's a phase, right? It, it's not clear how long the phase lasts. I think probably lasts about two years. I would say. Um, yeah, on average, it is a fair, you know, and then like, you know, a proper development to like the point where, you know, you're consistently profitable and, uh, you know, could do it potentially full time. I think probably around five or six years is, um, kind of the time frame that I would say, you know, as far as like relying on that as your source of income, right. And, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, I, you know, it, you can do it in two years and in one year. And I just, I just never seen that it play out in real life. I, I see, I see a lot of times what happens is people, you know, they think they've figured it out, but then they realize shortly after that they haven't, right. And, and they're not, <laughs> they're not ready to go full time. Uh, yeah, the thing is that uh, you can can be profitable and you can be profitable on a niche and that could you know you can it could bring you to to think that you are consistent but just because you have let's say even one year one year of consistent profitability it doesn't mean that you're going to be consistent for the next 10 years because they, i mean them for, for instance if you look at all the people who were buying stocks in uh, 1999 they were genius right and then 2000 comes, the dot com bubble comes, and all of a sudden, all those awesome trades have been washed out. But they, they were profitable, they were consistently profitable for over one year, right? Because everything was just going up, you know, every single day. Yeah, that's a really good point. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know a lot of people from that time, but I, I would assume that they got their asses kicked and like, they got their asses kicked in a pretty dramatic fashion too. I would yeah, imagine. I think, I think that it is, you know, somehow if you want to make some sort of a comparison or a parallel with what what's gonna happen or could happen, don't don't want to say it's gonna happen because I don't know for sure, but it could happen. It is. I mean, it, potentially it could happen. Right now, you see a lot of people that uh, keep on piling on stuff because. Market, it's only going up. The Fed is gonna bail out the market. So if I buy, the Fed is gonna come for the rescue, and I'll be, you know, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be in green. But I think even even that, it is some there is some sort of a misconception there because yes, it is true that over the last 10, 15 years, we've always seen the Fed coming in and rescuing the market. But on the other side, there is a new factor at play. 
um, when they were doing it before inflation wasn't a thing. 